citizen input session. Um, normally we keep it to 30 minutes, but we have 22 people who wish to speak, which would be 66 minutes. Therefore, council has entertained a motion to suspend the rules and allow all those who have put their names on here to speak this evening. So moved. Second. Mr. Wilms. properties here in, Bet in Bella Vista. Disappointment. That is the overall feeling I share after five months of STR conversations. What started as a desire to install reasonable regulations that would solve noise, trash, and parking issues created by a few short-term residences has turned into what feels like a full-scale assault on STR owners with larger properties who are trying to fill a need in Bella Vista with the resurgence of interest in our community. How, you may ask? by providing safe and fun accommodations for larger families or combined family vacations. The council's conversation has been so extreme, suggesting impending doom. Words like septic catastrophe and are these the type of guests we want in our community? 
insinuate that our guests are inconsiderate, disrespectful, rude, and a poor example of humanity. Gentlemen, it's no surprise when choosing to see all guests in this manner and owners in this manner that we end up down this rabbit hole now where it's been determined that too many guests will cause the doom of Bella Vista as we know it. Take off your glasses, please, and ask yourself, what good comes from short-term rentals in Bella Vista? I'll tell you just a few. Jobs for locals, a resurgence of interest in our community bringing more tax dollars, and in my family's case, a future for our children. We aren't money-hungry investors, nor were we born with trust funds. We are just like you. We have children who are relying on these properties to pay for college. We work hard and teach our children the value of good work ethics and morals and live humbly. Our two properties are our everything. And we bought these homes knowing that being able to welcome two families at a time, sleeping 10 to 14, our numbers would work. We are super calculated when it comes to our businesses and being able to provide for our family. We'd be able to pay our bills, provide a five-star experience for our guests as we happily and safely welcome them here to Bella Vista, oftentimes being their first point of contact. With the proposed septic restrictions, we will no longer be able to operate our properties. Triple B, the experts, assured us that our tanks have maintain their integrity and are healthy, regardless of the number of guests we have. In fact, they told me that last week. Plain and short, our septic is not an issue, and we are committing to, committed to keeping it that way. Gentlemen, I ask you please to not overreach. The original issues with short-term rentals revolved around noise, trash, and parking, all enforceable by the current ordinances. Cap the number of short-term rentals. Enforce current ordinances, and keep the permitting process simple and streamlined. I know you're tired of dealing with all of this, and these internal conversations are hard, but as written in Mr. Fowler's ordinance, the prudent solution has not yet been found. I implore you to think about widespread issues and realize what they are, and realize too, they aren't all that widespread, are they? With this in mind, I do believe you'll find that a simple, streamlined permitting process will benefit the community, as well as not overtax the city's employees, and there is a solution. Mr. Fowler's, unfortunately, is not it. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jody Barth. I live at 20 Windsor Lane. Um, Ms. Pope's comments were amazing and well put together, and it's clear she has done her homework. Um, I have not. I retired from the Army about a year ago. Um, my husband and I picked this area, Bella Vista, to retire from Germany um, after 20-something years in the Army. We Thank you for your service. Yes, indeed. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your support. Um, we decided we wanted to make Bella Vista our home and um, start a business with short-term rentals. Yes. We, bu we bought uh, a little home on Abingdon. Um, put about $100,000 into it and fix it up. Um, it's now the nicest house on the street, well kept. Um, we've been running it as a short-term rental for the last year and knock on wood, have not had any issues um, like I've heard in, in like other discussions um, about trouble guests in short-term rental. Um, that worked well, we decided we wanted to do another place we have a mother-in-law suite in our house, and then also rented out our home, our primary home on Lake Windsor, um, this summer when we were traveling. Um, I've been to a couple of these meetings, and I recall somebody saying, like, would you want to live next door um, to a short-term rental because of all the chaos that can ensue? Um, my husband and I not only don't mind if we live next door, but rented our own home out for the summer. Um, and it worked for everyone. Our neighbors were even excited about it because of the prospect um, potentially of, of them also having short-term rentals. I, I emailed, I think, four of you because our rental is in Ward 2, I think, and we live in Ward 3. And um, you know, gave my contact information, gave our situation. Um, the fact that we've sunk almost $2 million in investments, like this is our retirement, um, and this conversation makes us very nervous, because we could have picked anywhere in the world, but we picked here. 
We love Bella Vista and we love our neighborhood and um, we would like to stay. Thank you very much. Bryce Cole. Hey guys. Hey. Um, Bryce Cole, 38 Swanage. Hey, so I just want to start off by saying I'm really, really, really sorry to any person here who's been negatively affected by short-term rentals or had short-term rental folks next to them that have been an issue. And I, I hope that no one talking tonight, myself included, uh, helps to diminish that or, or take away from that. Um, we're all neighbors here. Um, and I'm also sorry uh, for the really the, the unenforced ordinances that have kind of led to this, right, and, and the position that a lot of us have been put in. Um, I myself am also uh, retired from the military. I served in Iraq, was blown up way too many times, and they medically retired me. Uh, I got to being a, a native Texan mountain biking with President Bush, and he got me into it. And it's been a huge part of my life and my family's life, and that led us here to Bella Vista. I love it out here. We bought our dream lake house out here. Unfortunately, I still have to have a day job, and so we bought our lake house with the intent to rent it out until we can retire. And so the reality of the matter is because we didn't buy it 20, 30, 15 years ago, it's expensive. We need to be able to rent it out. And my beg and my plea uh, to you all is to please, please, please reconsider the septic ordinance that is part of this. It does not make sense um, to enforce this when almost every single uh, house uh, on my street has these small tanks and all of them are three or four bedroom houses. I think we can come up with a better solution for this had my tank serviced, everything is good with my tank. I'll have it serviced every six months if you want me to have it serviced, but the reality of the matter is, if you tell me that I have to take my four bedroom house down to a two bedroom house, you're taking away half my house, and you're taking away my dream, and you're taking away my family's dream, and there's just no way around that. Um, it doesn't equate to what the city council purports to want to accomplish, which is a safer environment for the citizens with regard to septic. I would love to uh, you know, have some tax dollars go to expand the sewage, anything like that. Um, but the reality of the matter is the one piece of this, which is taking away bedrooms from people's houses via the health and safety by the septic, is really just crushing dreams. It's crushing people's ability to have short-term rentals in Bella Vista. And you're also going to kill the best and the biggest short-term rentals in Bella Vista, which means proportionally the larger amount of the tax dollars. There's no way my four bedroom lake house can survive getting what a two bedroom uh, regular house gets because my bills are just a ton more. Um, so I'm just begging and begging and pleading at this point for the city council. Um, I've got some of my neighbors here to, to speak hopefully this evening. We love our neighbors, we love everybody. We wanna be part of this community. We are not a faceless corporation. And as much as we can wordsmith it, um, putting these caps on houses and rendering half their house unusable is really just a taking. It's taking it away from us and it forces us to be in a situation we don't want to. Appreciate it. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Amy Malaya Kovic. Good evening. I'm Amy Malaya Kovic. We own 14 Pool Circle um, just up south on Lake Avalon. It's a lake house. <coughs> and it is used by my family as our personal vacation home. We also rent it out as a short-term rental. And without the ability to rent it out, our family could not afford to have a lake house. We're not, uh, we're not rich or fancy. Before deciding where to invest, I spent between eight months and a year researching areas, researching the regulations, figuring out where what my dream was is something that could be accomplished. And after missing out on many, many offers, I got handed what I thought at the time was a gift from God. It was an off-market lake house introduced to me by a neighbor that was in desperate need of repairs. And the out-of-state owner sold it to us. And at the time, we called and we spoke to the state, we spoke to the county, we spoke to the city, and we spoke to the POA. And my question to all of them was, what sort of regulations do you have? What sort of regulations are going to be put in place? Are there any talks about regulations? And I was repeatedly assured by everyone, there are no covenants, there are no restrictions, and surely Bella Vista is a very STR friendly area because we've been doing this since the 70s. This would be one of the last places on earth that they would choose to regulate. We have a long, happy history of welcoming guests to Bella Vista. So 
That being said, we chose to invest six, six months of our life. We literally drove down from Springfield every weekend, my husband and I and my parents, and worked on this house all weekend long and then went home and worked all week and spent our savings and borrowed money to get it perfect because we wanted to create a space that not only our family would enjoy, but other families. And we're talking grandparents with their kids and grandkids because that is the majority of the guests that come stay with us. We wanted to create a space for families to create memories and come back to year after year. My father came and helped with many of the projects for months, and I'm sorry I'm getting emotional, but it was a family dream. And we started it renting out in July, and then dad died. And this was the last project that we worked on together, and I swore I would never sell this house. Now the reason I need you to hear this, and I'm sorry about the tears, but I, again, like Bryce said, I'm not a faceless corporation either. These decisions you're making impact families. Thank you. And it's stripping away rights and dreams and the ability to keep something that we invested our heart and soul into. If you cap our occupancy from 13 down to six as proposed, we won't be able to charge these same rental rates that we're charging and we're gonna be competing with everybody else who's reduced down to six. So our expenses from the house will remain the same while our income will be cut in half. And for many of us, that will make a difference on whether we can keep our home or have to sell it. So I really, really hope that you will consider these regulations, especially tabling the septic. Um, we're open to improving our septic system if need be, but we need the time to do it. Okay, thank you, Amy. Matt Coppins? Matt Coppins, working full circle. Um, I'm here to, uh, to share some facts. I'm a civil engineer and I'm licensed in the state of Missouri and the state of Illinois. I uh, understand septic systems and their functions and consider myself to be a responsible STR owner. Uh, it's been uh, stated that the city is facing an ecological nightmare in the future over potential septic failures, well, this might be true, but this is due to poor city planning and not due to short-term rentals, when short-term rentals make up almost 4% of the homes, and many of those are on sewers. Our home has a two-bedroom septic system. It has five bedrooms. Most of our groups are between 18 and 12 people. Um, our two-bedroom system, it's rated for 270 gallons a day. Um, because we're on city water, we're able to watch how much water is put through our system on a monthly basis. Uh, on our peak months, we used up to 216 gallons per day, but our average for the whole year is 98 gallons a day. Um, we called BB Septic and, uh, to come pump our system a year after renting it out in order to be proactive, and they literally would not come. They said it was unnecessary, so in regards to the septic, we do not and we have not. Uh, exceeded the capacity of our two-bedroom system. At a bare minimum, you are going to require, if you are going to require changes to the septic system for occupancy reasons, you should at least give us 18 to 24 months to do that, knowing that it has taken that long for major system revisions. Or better yet, at least grandfather in existing rentals with new rules for all future, and then new rules for all future short-term rentals. We know that if we don't take good care of our system, we can encounter problems which would uh, then prevent us from running our home. Obviously, it'd be in our best interest to uh, take care of our system and monitor it. The real problem is that the city never enforced the codes that are already on the books. They turned a blind eye, fully knowing that they were granting permits for two bedroom homes with unfinished basements, knowing full well that the occupants would end up finishing out those space for personal use. This uh, applies to a large number of homes, mostly owner-occupied in rentals, but you are not enforcing these standards on any of them. Short-term rentals are just being called out on this because you have a few big party houses on some of the lakes and you don't know how to enforce uh, the ordinances that you already have on the books. Thank you. Damon. Damon Wallace, uh, 551 Per Fleet Drive. Uh, one of the things that you can do practically as a committee is actually 
and as actually appoint another committee to study these things out, uh, we need, if you have a committee of 10, you have five short-term owners uh, and then five on the other side. Whenever you look at different things you don't know a whole lot about, you usually bring in experts. So here you have a whole room full of experts <laughs> that can actually lead in this discussion. So if you have, if you have this, none of this is emergency, after all, I mean, we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, you can have that committee that, uh, you know, the short-term rental owners can actually elect, you know, their five people. The other side can do five people. There's surely some common ground that they can come up with on some of these things that can actually, uh, and then, then make those recommendations to the city council. Um, so I would ask you to, to at least consider doing that. Uh, it may take a little bit longer, but that way you wouldn't have, it wouldn't impact some of the people that are really going to be struggling uh, if this, this ordinance, you know, the ones that are being discussed, the things that are coming up, um, how impactful they're going to be. And you've already heard some of that tonight where some of them may end up even having to sell out their home, their dream home that they've wanted. Uh, and also the amount of jobs that will be affected. So I think on the table, if you could have, if you could do that, uh, just a council of 10, five and five, that can make recommendations to the city council as far as further ordinances go, uh, regulating short-term rentals, I think that would be a good idea. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Good evening, gentlemen. Michelle Chiaco, actually started after I say my address, please. Uh, 51 Perfleet Drive. It has been said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. No government should have the self-granted authority to determine how their constituents can make an income, especially when said governments bring in tax revenue from it. Mayor Christie, at the last meeting I was able to attend, we spoke after the meeting. I asked you to keep the septic aspect off the ordinance because septic does not discriminate. And if that was the issue, it needed to be addressed separately. And it affected every home and not just short-term rentals. Mayor Christie, you agreed and promised me that you would do just that on the next work session on August 30th. I took you at your word and entrusted you to be a man of your word until I watched that meeting. You broke that promise to me. Statements were made that septic is a potential catastrophe, but there was no proof that the catastrophe had anything to do with STRs, only that there are many old systems here. When a septic fails, the health department spokesperson made it clear that they would never evict or declare a property unusable. This is a whole city item and not just a small fraction of the homes that have septic systems. I spoke with several council members and you all agreed as well. Consider now my sense of betrayal as a constituent. If this is truly an issue the city cared about, it would be across the board separately and not used as a public safety gimmick to regulate short-term rentals. Mayor Christie, I also spoke to you about the governor's decision in 2020 that for public health and safety, he could choose which businesses would be allowed to operate and sustain their owners and which would not and how I was affected by that. Public health and safety at that time were used as a scapegoat to close down many businesses that would never again thrive the way they did before. I quickly went from being able to support myself and pay my mortgage to not because of a public health and safety issue. As corporate executives and more people began working from home, I made a decision to utilize my private property rights to generate income by short-term renting a small portion of my home to help pay the mortgage. I spent every penny I had to make that happen so I could make up for the income I lost through the decision of a government official. Happily, I have been able to share the space that I have made and I've met amazing people who have come to stay with me. I've encouraged people to make Bella Vista their home and I've made friends with those who have just made that decision. Councilman Wozniak, in that August 30th work session, you had the perfect answer to the sandwich rule. You said you would never vote for that rule because you cannot tell people what they can and cannot do with their property. Bravo, Councilman Wozniak, you're right. All of you should remember that statement as it applies to the entire ordinance. So here we go again with a government potentially deciding who shall and who shall not be able to make an income, potentially denying their property and constitutional rights, specifically the Fifth Amendment. As a former elected official, and in light of what happened in 2020, I urge you to please remember your oaths to protect the minority of your constituency, as we do in a constitutional republic, from the overreach of government. Septic is not the issue that's at hand here, but it is the excuse to create draconian ordinances to inhibit people's income. Remember those good intentions and where they lead. Rights lost are rights never regained. Thank you.
Andy Foster. Hey there, number 17, our lane. Um, as I've listened to some of these emotional pleas, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that all of us say for our kids' college, too. Uh, and we did it in a lot of different ways. I know one thing for sure, these short-term rentals today put my kids in danger. I didn't say for my kids' college by putting anybody else's kids in danger. That causes a risk to our physical property as well as our kids. You know, I've got teenagers on my street who cannot walk their dog because of the stranger danger in the house at the end of the cul-de-sac. We have kids seven and nine years old. They can't play in the cul-de-sac anymore because of the stranger danger. Every two to four days, strangers move in. I, wanna, I just want to swing my grandbaby on the back porch and I have to profile every two to four days everybody who comes in and out of their six pack of beer under their arms and they're tromping down to my lake come on this is a it's a private lake okay that's my life now i had a dream too my dream was that i would move to this area and i would actually enjoy being on the lake enjoy the immunities i don't mind sharing them with people who are paying for them at all what i do mind though is the fact that i don't know who that is next door short-term real guests screaming at me because they think they have rights they feel entitled to everything and I'm sorry the guest it's the behavior you can by the way thank you for the last ordinance I think it's great I don't think it goes far enough I think it should go further what's missing from it is a voice from the people we've begun to organize as neighbors we will never ever ever go away let me make sure our short-term rental owners know this we're fighting for the safety, security of our families. We will never, ever, ever go away. We're not gonna stop. We're not gonna just give up. This was my dream to live here. Now I can't, I work all week, holidays, weekends. I can't go down to the lake and enjoy myself without profiling who it is that's next door. What kind of party are they gonna have? You know, some of them turn the music up and they, they scream and yell. When they see you, they do that because they somehow wanna be seen and heard. And the reality is they're in a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. It's not a commercial property. And we, my right to live in peace in the home that I bought has been completely ripped from me. It's ripped from me, it's ripped from my husband, my kids, my grandkids. It's ripped out away. We have rights too as property owners. Everything that you put in that latest <coughs> ordinance, I think is fantastic. I would like to see concentration limits uh, added. I want 4%, no more than 4% of all the houses on any given lake could be STRs or on any given street could be STRs. Um, no on-street parking. There, there should be the fines were great. I, I'm telling you, you guys did a great job this last time, but please don't stop. And if you do, we won't. That is a promise to you. Thanks, Abby. Okay, I really can't make out the name of the next speaker, but you live at Four Carroll uh, Ray Lane. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll forgive you. <laughs> Cordy Zeiser, Four Carroll Ray Lane. I'll just move up a little bit now. Uh, I've been here 24 years. I love it here. I came here because I wanted to live into a, uh, a community, a residential community, a place where we know our neighbors and we feel like um, well, we're, we, we value our neighborhood. We value the people that live there. We know them. We get out and we walk and we talk and we, and we know people. And now all of a sudden it seems like quite suddenly maybe even to the surprise of the city council, things have changed. And uh, I know that we are a membership community. We pay uh, assessments every month to use the amenities that we have. And if we don't pay those assessments, we're not going to be able to enjoy those amenities. Uh, we can have guests that come in that uh, <coughs> enjoy those amenities with us. And I just don't know how much control is happening right now as far as the uh, short-term rental people coming in 
uh, how they're monitoring all that and the lakes and the golf courses and all that stuff. But uh, uh, it seems like this has all came on us quite suddenly. And I know that having lived here for 24 years, these, between the POA and the city, there's always been kind of a, um, an overwatch, so to speak, as to what happens in this community. And um, one thing that comes to mind, it seems like we've spent 24 years trying to get a decent place to eat, and, uh, and there's always been resistance to that. And now all of a sudden, we wake up one morning and we've got a whole, whole neighborhoods that are full of commercial mini hotels. And we don't know these people, and it bothers us. And um, I just feel that uh, that we need we need to value our neighborhoods more. Uh, I don't want to get stuck on this septic issue. I think a lot of these homes are on sewer anyway. It's a mute point, but um, I I don't know what to say. I feel like I don't know the people in my neighborhood anymore. And I just there's a lot of a lot of stuff we're having to put up with. Uh, a lot of cars parked on the street, a lot of fast moving traffic, uh, a lot of uh, partying going on. But mostly to me, it's just the fact that I don't feel like we have the same neighborhood that we used to. And that's the whole reason I moved here is to, is to have a sense of community, a sense of neighborhood, not a, not a commercial environment. And I am not quite sure how this thing got thrust, uh, thrust on us so quickly. Or, or, or was the city completely uh, uninformed of what was happening or what was about to happen? I don't want to deny anybody their, their uh, opportunities to earn a living, to put their kids through college, but I'm just not quite convinced that Bella Vista is the right place to do that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. I want to briefly explain what just two STR homes here in at Bella Vista do for real people like me. These two homes allow me freedom. Freedom to live a life that I could have only have dreamed about when I graduated college with a teaching degree years ago. Because of STRs, I was, I'm able to attend every single softball game with my daughters, to take her to every doctor's appointment without worrying about a boss without uh, being fired for when she spends a week in the hospital like she did last year. I get to see my husband who works with me every single day, all day long, building a life that we worked for, planned for, and made happen in your community, not even in my own. We have the privilege of creating this life together because of STRs and the dear guests that choose to spend their time and money in Bella Vista. I average between 100 to 150 guests per month between the two homes that I have in Bella Vista. These 100 plus guests shop at your stores, they buy ice, ice cream down your street, take families to hike the trails, and they often come back to buy and live in Bella Vista. These guests are important. They're so important to the fabric of Bella Vista because they're becoming your next wave of citizens. Just these two homes support five cleaning staff. Three of these ladies are in their 60s and 70s who in their own words are having to start over right now. Their jobs help to pay their light bills and put food on their tables. These two homes help to support four landscapers. One of these young men is saving his paychecks to pay for welding school next year because his parents can't afford to help him. Another man is sending money home to his aging parents in another country. Just these two homes support a maintenance man that only receives $900 a month in Social Security. His job with us helps to put gas in his truck, buy groceries, and pays for the vet, his vet bills for his little companion dog. Fowler's Ordinance will take food and help away from so many that depend on these homes to support themselves. Multiply my examples by the number of STRs in Bella Vista. And you can do the quick math. This ordinance will harm real people. And who is to benefit? Grouchy Karens like the gal back here? Please do not disregard your duties as city officials 
to enact fair and justified measures if and only when they're needed with real data and research. Please do not allow the misinformed or a few angry people to take away our freedom to use our homes to safely and legally benefit so, so many people of the Bella Vista community. And I want to leave you with these sincere from the heart questions. A year from now, if you vote this ordinance in, how will you know you made the right choice? Will Bella Vista be any safer than it already is? Or will you have just created more problems for nothing? Thank you, Shannon. Yeah. Shannon Davis. Shannon Davis. Aaron Rebels? I'm here. Oh, there you are. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I spoke last time, but I did want to introduce myself in a different way this time. We actually moved to Bella Vista. My husband's a combat veteran Marine, and I'm an attorney. We moved to Bella Vista for several reasons, mostly because it's a safe, nice community. We didn't expect <coughs> commercial properties next to our houses, but that's what we're getting. Everyone saying, oh, it's not a commercial property. Well, isn't it for profit? Yes, is the, bus is the house being used for profit? That's a business. So it must be treated like a business. And that includes some safety measures. Because one thing we know is that the self-regulation is not working. How do we know self-regulation is just not working? Well, because I have to call the police for noise complaints. If I have to call the police for noise complaints at 11 o'clock on a Sunday evening when I have to go to the work the next day, I'm losing resources for myself as well. We know resources are being used because complaints are being filed. Whether these people actually get handed uh, citations or they get arrested, that's on the police department. Another thing is these resources are being used. We are sitting here in this community and our resources are being used when people are not bringing in the same type of revenue to compensate for those resources. Last time someone spoke about, you know, they vet people. I talked about credibility last time, and I think that's a huge issue. The short-term rental owners are very much focused on their business, and I understand that. They're not, we are more focused on the guests coming into these businesses. There's no vetting process that surely in, to make sure that there are no pedophiles coming in. There are no members of gangs or anything like that. I was a criminal defense attorney in Memphis for three years. These things that they are talking about are not just oblivion things. These are things that are realistic. These are things that can happen in this community without regulations. Unlike every single business, Bella Vista right now is basically offering up a unregulated business that we this just doesn't happen across the country. There's also the issue of my rights to my peaceful enjoyment of my property. I have a 12-year-old and a 7-year-old. I want to live in the freedom of some of these people that don't even live in our communities, that have businesses that affect my kids' lives. Their kids are great. They, have, they don't live next to these. That's fine. However, I do. My kids are impacted. My kids' freedom, my kids' futures. Because I've seen these things happen. I've seen what poor regulations can do. I've seen what one bad guess can do. One bad guess that's not properly vetted, that there's no regulations, can impact a child's life for the rest of their life. Is that something this city council is really willing to risk? One child's life. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Aaron Rebels. Uh, so my husband and I, he's a firefighter with Bella Vista, I'm a massage therapist. We purchased a home in Bella Vista last year. Uh, it's currently being operated as a short-term rental. And we also plan to buy another lot here and build on it uh, to use as another short-term rental as an additional income stream. We'd like to start a family one day, and right now both of us need to work full-time. Um, however, the proposed regulations are causing us to abandon that plan in favor of investing in a different community, like Bentonville, for example, or Cave Springs don't have these kind of regulations coming up. 
Um, their rights as a property owner wouldn't be infringed on. Now, I truly sympathize with people who are having concerns, who have had bad experiences, but I feel that n the proposed regulations that I've read, the new ordinances, don't they don't come in with a scalpel and just fix those very specific issues. It's a lot more blunt force trauma and hoping that it works. So I would think that last time someone said a simple private list of STR owners with the addresses of where the STR is and the contact information that the authorities can use if something comes up would be the best way to address this. Things like noise, parking the street, you can contact the person who's responsible for that house and get it taken care of rather than putting regulations on everyone who owns a, a STR <coughs> in Bella Vista. So do we really need to create more work for y'all, more work for the other members of this, or the other people who work for the city, and more expense and red tape for us property owners to go through when there's a much more simple solution? I hope you'll take this course of action into consideration and avoid adding burdensome regulation to us, extra work to y'all's plate, and not drive away the taxpayers and the tourism from this beautiful city. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Ward. Hello. Uh, 36 Swanage Drive. Um, yeah, it, I don't, I'm not a short-term rental owner. Um, I, I just wanted to offer a perspective from someone who doesn't hate short-term rentals that lives here in Bella Vista. We, uh, we have short-term rentals uh, on either side of us. We have uh, a couple more in our on our street and since those have become short-term rentals the properties have been beautified the, the investors have come in and put money into these properties and drastically improved our little neck of the woods there um, not only that the, the the renters that are coming in are not party animals, they're generational families. We see, you know, three generations at the houses next to us. And they're, they're having family reunions there. Um, we go on those kind of trips with our family. We have, we have three sons and two grandsons and we take trips around the country where we stay in short-term rentals and much prefer that to staying in a hotel because we can all be together. Um, and we've never been asked on any of our in, in any of these very various places across the country we've never been asked if we have a criminal background so that's not something that's that's you know just to bella vista um where we live now we're able to take our kids and walk around the block without having to worry about predators would we let them play in the street by themselves no <laughs> But I just want to offer a perspective from somebody who thinks you should be able to do what you want with your own house and not have these, these kind of regulations placed on you when you bought the property with investment in mind. So that's all, really all I have. Okay. Thank you. St. Helens Lane. My husband and I have been Bella Vista residents and property owners since 2004. We've raised our family here, built our dream home here, and continue to invest both personally and financially in Bella Vista. We also plan to retire here. We purchased several trailside lots two years ago with the intent to build a small number of short-term rentals. This plan to build is not simply an opportunistic real estate endeavor. It is part of our financial plan for income in retirement. Construction is currently underway on our first short-term rental property. As an 18-year resident, taxpayer, and investor in the city of Bella Vista, I would like the city council to consider the following questions regarding its proposed permitting process. First, who will be eligible for a permit and how will they go about obtaining one? Specifically, will the process include property owners like myself who are partway through construction when the ordinance takes effect? Secondly, Will there be a process for property owners who are denied a permit to appeal or apply for an exception? 
Lastly, what is the reasoning behind the cap of 600 permits? In researching other city ordinances across the country, many of those that limit the number of permits base it on a percentage of the number of homes in the city. This method would seem less arbitrary and considers the future growth of both Bella Vista and our regional tourism industry. In addition to these questions, I would like to suggest the City Council consider tabling this topic until after November 8th, when we will have a new mayor as well as new members on this council. Thank you. Thank you. Nathaniel Green. Good evening. Nathaniel Green, Five Rogan Circle. I live here in Bella Vista for almost two years at this point. I do own an STR that my wife and I operate out of our home. So we are, I guess, in one of the, I can't remember which, in the second of them, it's uh, I guess classified as a Type One, where it's owner occupied. Uh, but so I'm very pro STR, but more importantly, I'm very anti regulation. And through some of the things that I heard in the last uh, working session, and also some of the things that come up tonight, the idea of which Basel encapsulated that heard a lot of things which I would call pre crime. That's what's being talked about. People saying that we're going to create <coughs> regulations because there might be a problem. There might be an illegal act. That's something that to me is both anti-American and also evil at its core to be able to convict people before anything even happens. And that's what I see both in part, parts of this regulations, but like I said, in a lot of the discussions that I heard in that working session and even things that were here tonight by someone who said that they were a member of the court at one point. That's, to me, is very disturbing. And that's all I can say on that. I think that ultimately this community was founded on people coming to it from outside. That's something that's well known in the history of this community. and. This again starts to go against that. I looked at the uh, website for visit. I guess it was visit Bella Vista. I can't remember the exact one, but it's linked through the through the city as part of the the basically the, the tourism and every single uh, stay that was offered there was a link to some type of Airbnb or short term rental. That's done by the city. So I I just don't understand how this set of regulations and that go together. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. <laughs> Philip Mason. Some days when I wake up, I feel like I was born in the wrong country and perhaps in the wrong century. When I hear the Bella Vista City Council talk about taking away people's property rights in regards to short-term rentals, a most fundamental property right to lease or to rent one's own property. I feel like I've woken up in communist Russia, red China, or even socialist Canada. The purpose of the government is to preserve people's rights, not take them away. Dr. Blackstone, the great classic legal scholar, points out that no man, no man-made law can violate one's absolute rights or natural rights or even inalienable rights. On that list of absolute rights, is the freedom of choosing one's own place of residence and the right to use one's own property as one sees fit. John Locke, who influenced the founding fathers of this country to include such property rights in the US con Constitution, pointed out that business affairs are private, not governmental, as long as the business does not violate the basic rights of others. He stated also that buildings, improvements, and changes to one's property are private, not governmental concerns as long as they don't violate the inalienable rights of others. Locke also asserted that it's the right to defend one's property that is essential to freedom. This city council has offered several reasons why we should regulate Airbnbs. None of them hold any water. Partying is not allowed by Airbnb. Septic is easy to manage. 
You just make sure to pump your tank every two or three years or make repairs as needed. But none of those reasons justify removing someone's constitutional right to own property and to use it at their benefit. One of the most common reasons I hear from this council is that we need to regulate STRs because they just need to be regulated. Meaning everything needs some form of regulation, so why not STRs? But why STRs? Why not regulate people's brains with computer chips or put limits on how many times people can go to the grocery store? This council has much more important things to worry about than how many times someone can go to the grocery store. This council has more important things to worry about, like how they're going to figure out where they're going to get more tax revenues from and how they're going to fund all these city building products they approved and without funds for and how to get water, sewer, and internet to the people of Bella Vista. This city council will be held responsible by this people and by God if they infringe or try to eliminate people's right to own property and use it to their benefit. Mr. John Flynn said he was scared for single women who lived next to SDRs. If Mr. Flynn is implying that single women will get molested or raped, when, then he is totally wrong, as Airbnb and Verba would have been sued out of existence and would have changed their ways many years ago, if not decades ago. I would also point out that women and single women are often the most common renters of Airbnbs. Being able to rent out your property is a fundamental right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you have fun? Uh, my name is Dick Fromm. I'm the president of Bella Vista Village Cooper Shares Owners Association, Inc. It's generally called the Greens. Uh, our facility is located uh, on, it borders the number one hole of Burksdale, and we're fairly isolated. It was, it was designed by Cooper uh, and built in 1982. Uh, we've been in business for about 40 years. Uh, initially, all the folks that purchased a timeshare <coughs> from Greens One had to be a property owner uh, in Bella Vista. So it was really comprised of, of owners that lived in other states. We come here uh, for a week. Uh, about 140 of our owners end up buying, building a home here and exchanging their property for, you know, for, for a permanent home. Um, our, our units are all two bedroom. Uh, our units all have sewer. Uh, the parking is, is plentiful. It was designed you know, carefully to make sure that all the folks that were there would have a place to park. Uh, I kind of describe it as a resort inside a resort because that's what Bell Vista is, it's really a resort. Um, because a lot of our units were purchased in 1982, the initial owners, my parents were one, uh, purchased our unit in 1982, uh, most of these folks have passed away. And so you're seeing second generation folks that come in. In some cases, a lot of people elect not to uh, continue on with their timeshare. And so we've become a situation where we have rentals, we have short-term rentals for a week at a time. And our concern in this matter is that there might be some constrict, um, restrictions on our facility because the owners that are still there, and we have quite a number, rely on these short-term rentals to offload the cost of, of operating our resort. Uh, we're a nonprofit. we're not trying to make a bunch of money. Uh, again, we just have people that come here from all over the country, um, and when they come, they really hit the courses hard. They, they'll play golf three or four times in a week. They'll go. They're very, very active people, and so I think it, it is a, a good thing for the community to have people come in, uh, spend their money, and then leave, and then other people come in. So that's our that's our thought. So a little different for everybody else, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Justice East Joseph Bollinger, 14 Kisser Drive, Bell Vista. Uh, I don't own a short-term rental. I do own a long-term rental that someday I'd like to turn into a short-term rental. So it doesn't necessarily directly affect me right now. Uh, the reason I want to come speak tonight is because I try to leave, try to leave not to impose on government in regards to the city functions. Obviously, I'm, I'm part of county government, so I try not to impose on uh, my peers here in the city whenever I, uh, I, I like to do that. But I feel the necessary to do this today. Uh, when the conversation of for the short term rental started, I just I understand the intent of what you're trying to solve. There are individual issues with short term rentals that happen on an individual basis, whether it's parking in the road, noise, whether it's 
people doing things in a lake that whether noise traveling, things like that. <coughs> but the good news is we already have ordinances that solve all that, but people have already mentioned. We, we need to solve this on an individual basis, not punish the masses of the short-term rental owners for individual issues with individual owners. Let, let law enforcement do what they need to do, enforce the ordinances that we already have on, on the books, make sure that people are held accountable for that. I want the people who feel safe from that's just short-term rentals. Let's start enforcing these laws, making sure that gets covered. Belvis has a history of short-term rental use, whether it's the hotel that originally was here with, with Bell Vista, or it was uh, village rentals. We have a history of, of short-term rentals. So why now is it suddenly an issue? Is it because, is, I feel that it's, when we originally had the hotel, when we had the village rental, there's no, there was no problem, no one complained. But now suddenly when people are benefiting from short-term rentals, having their investments, their retirement, their income tied to that, now it's a big deal. And that is something that just can't stand because we have people's incomes tied in this. And right now we're going through a recession. So now people are stuck in a position where they may not be able to rent out their, their short term rental anymore because they may not be able to get one of these permits that are in an extremely limited quantity. There's going to be a rat race to get these permits when they come out. And there's not going to be enough for everybody. So now you're going to have people whose homes may, values may freeze at the current level or possibly plummet where they may purchase it high and now they have to sell it low, even further damaging their income. So I, I implore you all tonight to, if you're going to vote on something, vote on the least restrictive ordinance possible. Make sure you focus on safety, which is the primary function of government. Make sure we keep the people safe. Make sure you keep the residents safe, people, the people next to the short-term rentals safe, and make sure to keep people in the short-term rentals safe. But don't do something that is overly restrictive and not something that government should do. And I just remind all of you that this is Bellavista, Arkansas. This is not Bellavista, California. And we do not want that kind of level of regulation in Bellavista. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Joseph Muriel Geza. Geza. Hi, good evening. Three Huntley Lane. Um, to the people in this room that have been negatively affected by STRs or have a sour taste, I apologize. That's not been the case with us. We've had two homes now for a little over two years, and our neighbors adore us. Um, they welcome our guests, they welcome us, and they greet us with a smile, even when we're the ones making noise, renovating the property with power tools. That being said, um, I'm an owner of two smaller STRs, uh, and I would like to discuss two topics. First is the permit cost, and secondly, keeping STRs up to code, or that proposed inspection to keep them up to code. When it comes to permits, yes, we're in favor. I feel like we need some kind of regulation. Just realize not all homes are created equal. Some people have five bedroom homes on the lake and some of us have two bedroom homes that, that have four to, to six guests. Um, so if we could consider maybe a, a two or three tier system where we look at either home sizes by square footage or bedroom sizes or number of bedrooms, that would be ideal. Because um, like I said, some homes are bringing in revenue of three to $500 a night, we, we're barely making a fraction of that. Um, secondly, it's been proposed that once the STRs are registered, that they're inspected to make sure they are up to code. Uh, and I'm afraid this is just another way to get more fees and charges and you know, potentially crushing us, the investors. Um, I think the STRs bring in plenty of revenue to Bella Vista, and both of the homes that we purchased We've renovated, and like somebody said earlier, we've completely flipped them. They look more beautiful. They're a lot safer now than they were before. And so if the safety and well-being of our guests is a concern, I think we should make it um, citywide and really consider the safety of our residents um, as well in inspecting all homes, not just STRs. Um, I think that's targeting um, a business that's, that's providing revenue for everyone. That's it. Thank you. Dan Bradley. Twenty two four four circle. Yeah. Um, you know I, I I've heard a lot of comments tonight, obviously I'm all for STR regulation. I think, uh, again, living not only next to an STR, but living on the lake next to an STR is like 
a double whammy. And uh, I, I heard a lot of good comments tonight uh, on both sides about uh, one gentleman that I, that I really commend is that he has two SDRs. He actually lives next to them. I mean, that's a whole different ball game. Uh, he, he has the right to go over there and do whatever he needs to do to protect his property and to make sure that there's not issues with them. Uh, that's, that's ideally how STR should work, right? So uh, I, I just jotted some notes down and I'll just take, give my translation to what this means. Uh, feeling the need of Bella Vista uh, equates to generating revenue from living in the city of Bella Vista or owning a property in Bella Vista. Um, you know, to me, to me, it's not necessarily necessarily one and the same. Um, somebody said we ought to do nothing about some of the issues. Don't even have regulations. Someone else brought the idea up that we don't need to regulate the septic tanks. Uh, I, I myself and you know and, and a few others here have, have spent the time and effort to be here for multiple workstations and comments that have been made tonight with the majority of the folks that are here, which are, you know, against STR regulation or certainly to the extent that we have in drafts. Uh, they obviously have not heard the comments. We, we had a state representative here who said, uh, the last thing you need to do is wait on the septic tank issues. Um, STRs on lakes, especially STRs with any rental people, if people don't understand the difference between having two people live in a resident, a residence, and having a two-bedroom septic tank, and then you bring some, you know, you have two bedrooms or you have three bedrooms and you bring a ton of people in, uh, it's not the same thing. The use, I don't care what kind of statistics you're showing that you that you show for your property uh, for for uh, the amount of water and sewage that's being utilized in your home. It's, it's a different story when you're talking about SDRs. And our representative from, representative from the state was very adamant about that, and he made two appearances here talking about it. So the last thing we knew, need to do is wait and do nothing. Uh, it needs to be addressed. Uh, another comment, guests do not, uh, guests support Bella Vista with income. Uh, having lived next to a large home on Loch Lomond, seeing the number of people that come in there, seeing the number of cars that are completely loaded. Uh, they do not buy their stuff here. They might buy it in Jane, Missouri at Walmart. They don't bring their own stuff in. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. <coughs> Mickey Roach. Roach. <coughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. It's not every day that we get to do things, something like this. My wife and I, uh, we live in Rogers. We have two investment properties in Bella Vista, and they are, they have brought us great joy. And uh, part of the reason we purchased those properties is we wanted to purchase one property for each of our kids to leave when we pass on, to leave a legacy for them. That was a dream that we had and doing that in Bella Vista has brought us great fulfillment. So today I just want to encourage you, and I th thank you for all the discourse. <coughs> this is not easy for anybody. It's very polarizing, right? But I do want to just encourage you to focus on safety versus septic. I'm a realtor in the area. I've been a realtor for seven years, and I work with a lot of builders. <coughs> and inevitably, every time I have a conversation with a builder, the septic systems in Bella Vista always come up. And it's an issue. So I don't think the issue is STR. I think the issue is septic. And I would encourage you to start with the heart of the matter. Go back to the septic and let's revisit that and get that right moving forward so it won't be an issue with the STRs. I also want to offer up another perspective to the world has lost its mind. We see that, right? Every single day. We see mass graves in Ukraine. A hurricane's about to hit Florida. Inflation is crazy. And these people that have bought STRs have poured their heart and soul into them. My wife and I have. We just are finishing up our second one. People come by all the time and say, it's beautiful. It's set empty for five years. 
And now it's no longer, it's not going to be empty. It's going to be beautiful. And when you impose regulations on people, it crushes them. It will crush them because people have worked hard to do the right thing. I understand there, there's problems. There's always going to be problems. But I do think we can regulate the safety and not worry about all the other stuff. Because in the big scheme of things, it is just stuff. Like I said, the world has a lot of challenges right now. Don't put one more burden on the people who really just want nothing more than to do the right thing. And we'll work with the homeowners. The impassioned lady who spoke about wanting a safe place for her kids. We'll work together, right? That's what we do as Americans. So let us give us an opportunity to, to do that. But don't impose regulations that will crush people. And we want to respect what you guys are doing. You're the one sitting up there. You're the one that, that direct the city. But let's all work together to do it right. Thank you. Thank you. Shauna Gears. Can I get your address, please? 911 and 13 Davis Circle. Uh, I, I'm a short-term rental owner of 911 and 13 Davis Circle. We originally came here in 2015 and my husband uh, took a job in the area and instead of renting we decided to buy a unit and in that unit I found one of the books from the original uh, VRBO vacation rentals that was here and it just really uh, it really touched my heart to see how many families had come here to, and enjoyed the area over the years. And as I talk to people, I am also a full-time realtor in the area, and then we have three children, and we wanted to be able to leave one for each one of our kids as well. And so we now own three units. We've done the same thing that a lot of these other short terminal owners have done. We have went in, we have put a new roof on it, we've repainted, we've got a new sidewalk, we've put railing up. Um, it looks beautiful. They're staged very well. We get great people in here. We get a lot of people that I help um, move full-time to Bella Vista in the area um, and they absolutely love it here and if you take those rights away from us you're you're keeping us from from growing and you're keeping our, our community from growing in this area and don't think that they spend all their money at Jane Walmart they spend plenty of money in this community all of the books that I have in each one of my units have Bella Vista specific um, businesses in the area so that people will put money back into our community not so ours are townhomes we have plenty of regulation uh, through the townhouse association already we don't need the city to to govern that we've already got governing rules that tell us what can and cannot happen in those units and the police you know if, if they get called for something let them do their job don't don't give us a bunch of unnecessary regulations on top of that. We are already paying out fees for POA, which they're gonna increase those again, paying townhouse dues, and now you're gonna assess other <coughs> fees on top of it. Please, just stop the bleeding. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, that ends the speaker's list. We now move on into council member reply. I'll kick it off. Michelle, at the August uh, work session I did ask council to consider blending the septic system for STRs and long-term rentals together and keep it separate from the ordinance and council decided that they did not want to do that they wanted to include it in there so I did speak to them okay great okay who wants to go first anybody yes. Steve? well start by saying thank you to uh, to everybody who came tonight uh, somebody mentioned and uh, you guys are probably tired of working on this and, uh, I'm not tired uh, I'm inspired I'm energized by the community's involvement uh, I don't want to take this cake out before it's baked that makes no sense to me we're gonna keep working on this we're gonna we're gonna continue to listen I think uh, I think 
people that spoke tonight did a really good job. Does it sound polarizing? Sometimes it does. It sounds like it's, uh, it's two sides. Short-term rental is good, short-term rental is bad. But when I listen tonight, I don't, I don't think that's the case, really. Uh, I appreciate the short-term rental operators. Majority of them are good operators and run a clean ship and don't want problems. And we all know, we've talked about this before, we all know if it's a handful of bad apples that make life difficult for everybody. For the residents of Bella Vista who come out of concerns for their neighborhood. There's nothing in our regulations, none of the proposed regulations that are going to stop the short-term rental. It is a part of America. It's a part of what we do. It's a part of what we allow when people acquire property. We're not here to stop short-term rentals. If your concerns are unruly guests, stranger danger, parking, trash, these are things that we have laws for. And enforcement is the way to deal with those things. We can do better with that. And one of the ways that we can do better, and most of the short-term rental operators, I think, appreciate this, we need a registry. We need to know where they are, who you are, how to get a hold of you. Uh, ultimately, uh, the short-term rental operator should be accountable for their property. And, and many of the good operators say, sign me up for that, I'll be accountable. We need to be able to communicate with you so that if there are problem guests, we need to let you know if there is a need to do more screening of your guests, then you can do that. With regard to, to septic, that doesn't, there's really, there hasn't been one resident tonight that came forward to say, that house next to me, the septic is getting ready to change the quality of my life. The septic becomes kind of a, a, a football, if you will, that's being kicked around for various reasons. What we've talked about with regard to the city is we need to educate and inform all residents, not just short-term rental operators. Our communications director, Cassie Lapp, has developed a program, and you may have seen it. If you're on Facebook, you'll see a lot of activity out there. In fact, we have a meeting coming up where we're inviting residents to come because most of us, when we move to Bella Vista, we're taking on a home with a septic for the first time in our lives. That was true for, for my wife and I. And we've had a learning curve. There's a right way to manage septics as owners, a responsible way. And the more we can educate and communicate about that, the more that problem gets addressed. I say I'm, I'm energized and inspired, inspired. I'm ready to put our heads down, continue to work on these things, short-term rentals, in and of themselves are not bad. Where we have problem areas, we need to work together and identify those, communicate with those short-term rental operators. There's work to be done here. I don't think we're real close yet. Those are my personal opinions about where we're at. Uh, thank you all for being a part of this process. This does inspire me, it does give me energy. I'm ready to go to work on this. Okay, thank you, Steve. Next. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna go right into this conversation, you know, shortly, right? So I don't know how to kind of separate public comment versus talking about the ordinance. Uh, you know, there's a lot of emotion around uh, people thinking that we're trying to eliminate the short-term rental business from Bella Vista, which just simply is not true. It's not factual. I heard some comments tonight from people make almost like specific statements. Uh, I don't know if you've been part of the entire conversation or not. I don't think so. And that's not being negative. It's hard to be part of every single conversation. Uh, you know, I had people come up to me. They sent me an email or I had a conversation with them on the phone. And it's hard to separate everything out, you know, to who sent me what, when, where, why, or whatever. 
Uh, so I can understand why it might be followed hard to have followed this whole thing the whole entire time and, and know just exactly what has taken place and, and what's actually written into the ordinances. So taking a step back again, because I've, I've, I've stated this more than one time, I'm actually the chairperson for the Bella Vista Advertising Promotion Commission, Discover Bella Vista. One of the things that we do, not one of, it's our responsibility to promote, to brand, to market Bella Vista. That's what we do. What happened was, and I'm going to go ahead and cover this now rather than during the ordinance, is I started getting calls and complaints. And not only did I get calls, I got emails. I was getting people making comments to me at church that were having to deal with them, okay? And I'm like, uh -huh. okay, I don't know why this has started. I mean, this has been within the last, seems like it was six months ago, but it's the last year and a half or two years. Time goes fast. Uh, matter of fact, we started this whole STR conversation, I think it was like October of last year, myself and our community development services uh, personnel. Okay, that's how long ago, that's how long we started this conversation. So all this other stuff started surfacing before that. And so when I, when I mentioned uh, this, some of these issues to Doug Tapp, our director of CES, he goes, man, he goes, we're getting calls all the time, you know? It's like, not only that, I wasn't even really aware at the time, because I wasn't following it, that uh, uh, some of the homes had occupancy limits of 14, 16, maybe even 18 people. And we're talking like two and three, three bedroom septic systems, right? Septics are, you know, when you say two bedroom, you're talking two people per bedroom. That's four people. You have 14 people. So, you know, that perked my ears up some more. Matter of fact, I say I didn't, I wasn't uh, unaware of it because one of, one of the gentlemen in church had sold his house on Loch Lomond that had a two bedroom septic and now it's being listed on Airbnb. And he's like, Doug, what's going on? I mean, this house is listed for 10 occupancy. It's only two bedroom septic and it's right on the lake. Why is the city allowing that? And I'm like, well, we don't have any regulation right now. We, we haven't started a conversation. That was actually, sincerely, the very first person that had mentioned this, this, this STR situation to me, okay? It didn't even have anything to do with noise and all that stuff unfolded later. Um, so, um, I knew we had a problem that was brewing. It was surfacing, it was bubbling, you know, it was perking to the surface. And, uh, I actually mentioned to Peter in passing, I'm like, you know, Peter, we're starting to get all this, this stuff unfold on short-term rentals. I go, I'm really concerned about it. He go, I'm like, if we don't address this, it's going to continue to brew, it's going to continue to percolate, and we're going to have residents showing up at our meetings at our front doors, and they're going to show up with, like, pitchforks and, you know, torches. Because I've got some people that are really upset, you know. I have, and, and I said, we, we really need to address it. And I think he said, I agree. We need to have a conversation about it. So that's, that's kind of where, where this all started. Again, it wasn't to shut it down. It was really to try to get ahead of it and make sure we didn't, we didn't damage that business model in Bella Vista because it is important to us and everybody recognizes that. No effort to shut it down at all. Um, so I was gonna read these in a few minutes. I'm gonna read them anyway, why not now? because uh, I read these at the work session. Just so everybody's clear on the statistics of STRs in Bella Vista. So we hired a company called Granicus to do research and homework for us to identify short-term rentals in Bella Vista, right? How many we have, what the addresses are, who the owners are, because we don't have any way to source that information. You know when you go on the booking sites, either VRBO or Airbnb, uh, you're not given that information. You know, you're not going to know where that short-term rental is until you've made a commitment to book. And maybe they don't even just supply it to you until three or four days before. I know that because my wife and I use them all the time, all over the country. Uh, you know, Sedona, uh, that's one of our favorite places. Uh, uh, oh, shoot. Colorado's right off the top of my head. Carmel. I mean, we go, we use them all the time, you know, because uh, we, 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 we travel a lot. Uh, and I'm aware too of going to these other cities that uh, they're having issues with short-term rentals. As a matter of fact, there was just an article today that Sedona, Arizona, as city councils talking about paying short-term rental owners to convert those short-term rentals into long-term rentals because their workforce doesn't have any place to live, they don't have anywhere to stay that they can afford. So they can't, 
they can't uh, employ enough people for the restaurants or enough people for the shops. I'm telling you, you go to the restaurants and the shops and those people will tell you exactly the same thing. So anyway, there's, there's this conversation taking place all, all across the country. Anybody that kind of reads onto this or is interested, it's, everybody has an awareness of it. All cities are dealing with it. So uh, some statistics, Bella Vista. 471 properties identified as STRs and are being that are being advertised currently. 409 of the 471 have the specific addresses identified. 62 of the 471 are in the process of researching the specific addresses right now. 58 properties are identified as STRs, but they're not being advertised right now. Doesn't mean they went out of business, didn't, doesn't mean they decided to do something else, sell the home, could be. Also, also could be they've taken the home down for, for three or six months or whatever the time frame is because they want to live in it for a while until they go on their next long trip, whatever it is. 299 individuals own 314 properties. 14 of those individual of those individual 299 properties own, own three or, or two properties. 71 LLCs own 91 properties. Uh, 14 of those LLCs own from four to two properties. There are 73 streets with multiple listing, ranges from 10 to two. I'm aware of like one cul-de-sac, they had three STRs on the cul-de-sac. There's just one gentleman left there that's a long-term resident, lives by three, three short-term rentals. Um, LLC grouping, groupings, they call it by community, so there's kind of segmenting out Bella Vista, you know, just to tell us where these, these properties are. There are 106 STRs on the Bella Vista east side, 98 in the Bella Vista central, there are 53 courts and townhouses, 36 on Lock Woman slash Windsor frontage, 17 courts and townhouses on golf courses, 16 Bella Vista, uh, 16 in the Bella Vista, the Highlands, 14 Shakespeare and Brompton courts, two Bella Vista area section land, whatever that is, two Windsor courts, one Tanyard Creek courts, and 27 are not assigned right now to one of those communities. So they're, they're still in the process of doing that. Um, and that is of the uh, 409 where the addresses have been identified. Okay, so there's still a whole group out there that hasn't been placed in one of those communities yet. Uh, 88 properties have 10 plus occupancy, 166 properties have 8 plus occupancy, and 6 occupancy is the most common occupancy listing. So there's going to be a whole lot of STRs that really and, and there are going to be more than that, too, that won't be negatively impacted by the STR ordinance at all. Um, okay, so that's the statistics. And then I, but one other thing that I would like to do, I mean, you know, data is data, which we have some now, we didn't have before. Um, I'm, I'm just going to read a few houses, and I just kind of pick these out, right, uh, for, for various reasons. I'm not here to call anybody out. I don't want to name names. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to do. So this is just an awareness thing for other people who are listening. Uh, there is uh, a home, list, uh, 20 occupancy, has a five bedroom septic. So in the original ordinance, you know, the, the limit would have been 10. We bumped it up to three. And I will tell you that that was kind of uncomfortable for me because I listened to the, the gentleman, Richard, from the state health department, right, talk all about septics. Anybody can say what they want. The guy knows his stuff. I couldn't believe really how eloquently he could present it, how well he did. I was like, man, this subject's gonna be really hard for everybody, but it was really, to me, pretty interesting. Um, there's a home uh, uh, with 18 occupancy, has a three bedroom septic, another 18 occupancy, three bedroom septic, 17 occupancy, two bedroom septic, 14 occupancy, three bedroom septic, 14 occupancy, two bedroom septic, 13 occupancy, two bedroom septic, 12 occupancy, two bedroom, 12, three bedroom, 10, three bedroom. So with the new ordinance, you know, that three times three, that's gonna be one over what you'd be allowed to be uh, uh, listing or marketing. Uh, 10 occupancy, two bedroom, eight occupancy, two bedroom. So you can see we have some homes. That Look, I didn't do everything. I just kind of picked a few out just to take a look. So a lot of these homes are listing for maximum occupancy way over the septic built. I'll tell you something else too, and it's listed in every single 
I believe, document that I've read. I shouldn't say every single because now I've got there's going to be a qualifier. There's going to be something out there. The state health department doesn't guarantee that the septic systems are going to operate, you know, like they're supposed to, even if they do approve a permit and allow you to build it, which most of the time they're going to. And I've actually read a couple. They are kind of like experimental designs because there wasn't enough property. And on those, they don't guarantee they're going to work either, but they also require the owner of that property to notify the next owner downstream that it is an experimental property so they will know what they're taking on. Anyway, the more I get into this, the more I learn, right? Uh, but I would just like to say, and I'll, I'll be quiet for now, we can move on, you know, to the actual ordinances themselves. themselves. But, uh, oh, one last thing. Vacation rentals. It's really interesting that Dan Lombard, he was on our uh, Advertising Promotion Commission. He's since resigned, he's not on it now, but I have a relationship with him. And uh, I was asking him about vacation rentals, how they operated. But, but before I did that, it's interesting that the complaints began not long after vacation rentals decided they weren't going to uh, work in that arena any longer. It was, just, it was just not long after that when the complaints kind of started coming in. And I'll tell you, that I know they provided really close oversight. They knew they couldn't afford for the community to get upset. If there was an issue at that property, they were there. They were Johnny on the spot. They sent somebody out, like, immediately to, to take care of whatever the problem was. But, you know, we talk about regulation. In order uh, to, for Vacation Rentals to accept you as one of their customers, uh, prior to acceptance by manager and as a condition for continued acceptance, the premises must, in the judgment of manager, be acceptable as to interior and exterior condition and as to sufficiency of furnishing. So, I mean, they even had their own regulation and they turned down a lot of homes to be used as vacation rentals. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we're asking for uh, proof of insurance. And I hear, well, VRBO, Airbnb, they require that already. Why should we have to do that? It's because we're a city and in regulation, if you already have it, that's fine. We're not asking you to do anything different. But even in their document, owner will provide owner, landlord, liability, insurance, and the minimum amount of $300,000 bodily injury, liability, and $150,000 property damage. They require it. They ask for it. Um, we talk about, uh, you know, just this just, just going on. As far as the property is concerned, Owner shall be responsible for an annual deep cleaning of the pro uh, premises, including uh, uh, complete corporate cleaning. Manager will perform this service at owner's expense unless notified in writing the owner has elected to make other arrangements. And I'm just saying, right, they had a lot of requirements. Uh, lastly, when they inspected the properties, they put them in one of four buckets. Economy, custom, deluxe, or VIP light front. And vacation rentals determined that, you know, not the property owner. So we talk about regulation. This isn't a government, government entity, but before they exited, there was plenty of regulation, and I only read part of it. See how small that type is, front and back, and then there's more pages to it. So there was oversight prior to uh, this, this issue that we're talking about right now, as far as like short-term rentals in, in the city is concerned. So that's just some overview, right? It's not like any homework or research hasn't been done. All right, Mr. Flynn. Yeah, I'd just like to thank everybody who commented today, and I've had a lot of input other days besides today on both, on both sides of the issue, and it really is helpful to hear from folks. Uh, obviously, this is a complicated issue, and we're going to try to work through it. We're trying to act in uh, good faith always. So uh, uh, we appreciate you all, and we're uh, going to do the best we can. Thanks. Just a few comments. I think there's some general confusion by many residents in Bella Vista, especially in the newcomers. Bella Vista was organized by a developer who bought large acreage in this area, uh, some of it unknown to the residents at the time. But his plan was to develop 25% open space, 25% uh, uh, recreational properties like the golf courses, the lakes, and 50% developed into subdivisions. Now he's developed most of that 50%, but there's still large acreages that are unplatted in the city. What the plans are for that, I guess we really don't know at this point. 
But the reality is, is that until 2007, January 1st, we had no local governance. Our governance in Bella Vista had to rely upon the county board, county judges, to make rules which then applied to the whole county. Uh, so they told Bella Vista, you need to uh, do your own thing, but we're not going to pass a rule that's not good for the county. It may be good for you. And so Bella Vista incorporated. After the incorporation, we didn't have a police force, we didn't have a fire department, we had no street department. The POA was partially serving that function, either by funding a branch office of the sheriff's department here uh, to have pol local police, or they funded their own fire department, their own street department. Um, when the city began, we took over those three departments from the POA and have extended, have substantially improved and expanded those for the service of our residents. Granted, we have a different and a more reliable funding stream because we have real estate taxes that now just don't go to the county, they go to Bella Vista. And we have sales tax revenue that's turned back as well as locally collected from businesses here, which go back to the people in Bella Vista. Whereas before, the counties uh, turned back monies on the streets. Only less than half of it came back to Bella Vista. Uh, and so when the city incorporated, we created a real hardship at the county level. They were short on their street budget by $750,000 the first year because they didn't share that revenue with the POA to maintain the streets in Bella Vista. So our regulations here are really short. When you say it wasn't planned, uh, I think Cooper did a reasonably decent job in the planning of the community and the layout, but the oversight back then was really the County Planning Commission, which had no, no interest, no benefit, and no return in the community that was being developed, whereas if it had been a city here before, we would have taken a much closer interest on some of the things that we are now faced with addressing. So I believe less regulation is better. I share some of the views of Councilman Bork, um, but I do think that we have an issue where we had regulation before from vacation rentals as the local, as the local party that oversaw all of the property, short term, long term, and they took care of administering those with their own rules and now that's gone away and so what we're doing is trying to step in and not not be over regulating but provide the minimum regulation needed to to meet the needs as we have been instructed and informed by you the public so thank you mr snow Thank you, Mr. Chief. Sometimes I think we need to be limited to three minutes like you guys. <laughs> because there's a whole lot of smoke in the air. Uh, seeing we're going to start this next, my first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to ask that we table the ordinance until the next work session would be October 17th. Not so much because we're, we're ready, but we just talked a long time about the septic. Now, if we're going to be fair to everybody, the short terms, the long terms, and the permanents all need to be under one ordinance. You can't go singling people out. There would be a way to make it fair for everyone, regardless of the situation. As far as everybody jumping all up and down over vacation rentals, before Ben Lombard took it over and it was company owned, they weren't saints. They weren't saints, okay? The reason for tabling it, now we can work on other parts, but my reason for tabling it is because some of us, I believe, want to run this through pretty quick. If we mess with it tonight, we won't know for sure what it'll look like until next month. If we let it sit, work on it on the 17th, get the septic part right, then maybe we can actually work on it and have something to hang on to instead of everything's up in the air. 
So, I mean, we can do it on the other parts of it tonight, but I, I, I feel we need to push it back as far as making a first reading until at least October and then work on it on the uh, 17th of October, the work session, to get the wording in the ballpark. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. We have a couple of housekeeping items that we'll address, and then we'll start with the two ordinances. <coughs> Each ordinance now has amendments that have been brought forward this evening. Um, so there's a long evening still ahead of us. So let me carry on here. Um, the next on the agenda is action on the minutes of our August 29th regular meeting. Those minutes are in your packet. Are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Mr. Snow, Mr. Flynn. All right. <coughs> Roll call vote. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Snow? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. Moving on to reports. The August 2022 financial report was issued by Finance Director Hall. Um, we are still in excellent financial condition. And uh, if you have any questions, I would encourage you to meet with her. She is, of course, going through the 2023 budget process now with the department heads. So that might not be a bad thing to talk to her about as well, see how she's coming along. Mayor Christie, so uh, it seems like in the past we have included those financial reports in the package when they're issued. It's, it's been a while since we've done that. I went looking for a previous month recently. She couldn't get them out on the Thursday. They had to come out on the Friday because of, of a system glitch, is what she was telling me. Okay, so we so typically we will, financial reports will be a part of the agenda package where that's being reviewed. Yeah, in fact, uh, she's now getting on faster than we had before because she's mechanized quite a bit. Of yeah, I actually got the financial reports before the Thursday. It okay. came a couple of days before, right. so. She's been sending them direct to you all as soon as she Yes. Ready. Do they get posted on yes. the website? On the I website. looked for them today. That's why they haven't been a part of the packet, because you've been getting them ahead of time. We, get, really we get them by email. The get them by email. We can do the packet. And Cassie posts it. It gets posted on the website. Mm -hmm. I need to find where that is. I, I was unable to find I'm sure it. she can tell you she's sitting in the back. Okay. Now, when you say including the packet, you're talking about being part of the PDF file that's, yes. that's put out? Mm -hmm. It never has been. It's always been. I don't remember it. Maybe, but I. It's been a long time. We we always get a separate file from Terry, when and now, from, from Kim. Kim. But they. I don't ever remember being like in the packet in the PDF file. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying they don't belong there. Yeah, I just don't say I remember being in the PDF file. Your rules require that you receive a financial report as part of the order of business. So. You know, getting it is fine, but for it to be a part of the order of business, that's fine. I'm not debating whether it goes it or just not. Needs to I'm be just saying it's business. never been in the PDF file. Mm -hmm. I, I'll go back a way. I remember when it was, but I don't know when it stopped. Mm -hmm. So it could yeah. it could have been quite a while since it stopped. I can't speak to that. Anyway, you are getting. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Unfinished business. We don't have any. We'll move on to new business. The first is. An ordinance regulating short-term rentals to provide for the requirement of a permit uh, to operate a short-term rental to provide a cost. Hmm? Motion to suspend. I'm sorry, you're right. I move to suspend the rules and uh, approve the and proceed to allow all ordinances and agenda on the agenda to be read by title. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. <coughs> Roll call vote. Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Murph? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Carried 6 0. Thank you. Sorry about that. We changed, uh, we changed our agenda recently. So it take where it used to be. <laughs> Put it down. Okay, new business. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. I would like to make a motion to table. It's not in order yet because the title hasn't been read. It has to be read. Mm -hmm. Read it quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's an ordinance regulating short-term rentals to provide for the requirement of a permit to permit or excuse me to operate a short-term rental to provide a process for revocation of a short-term rental permit to provide safety and on-site septic inspection requirements for short-term rentals 
to provide occupancy uh, limits for short-term rentals and providing penalties for violations and <coughs> purposes. Now, Jim. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to table this until October 17th so we have an opportunity to go over the uh, septic part of this more thoroughly and also to stop us doing something tonight and putting this thing on first reading which will actually speed up because second reading will come and third reading will come and we can you know always do something then but i would like to do it now so we have a work session to get the wording right as opposed to short term long term and everybody before we go any further with the rest of this we know the rest of it i think will be pretty much cut and dry and pretty smooth but this is where the big big bump is you, you can table it to the next regular meeting and work on it in the work session on the 17th but you can't if you table it to the 17th we're going to have to call special council well, meeting whatever you said yeah. <laughs> so yeah. i think I, i'm not one to speak for alderman wozniak or no but that's but that's I, fine i think you want you want to table it to the next october regular meeting yeah and, and that would provide for another work session yes october 24th october 24th yeah, yeah. and okay. then the work session is the 17th yeah. and mayor that would need a second all right. So I have a motion on the table to table. Second. Second. Mr. Snow, any Perfect. discussion? Yeah, I'll start it. Um, on the motion to table. On the motion to table. Yeah, no, I'm opposed to tabling. Uh, it's, it's, it's time to move forward. Uh, I said we've been working diligently for a year. Uh, the original ordinance that was proposed, we uh, have had you know multiple conversations we we've had a special session we listened to everybody's input uh made several adjustments to it uh then after the last work session the additional adjustments were made to it and it's, it's time to have the conversation i don't know what further conversation can take place on the septic portion of it now we had the gentleman in from the state health department he took us through everything uh, whether you want to call them concerns or not, I'll leave that up to you personally. Uh, I know what I heard, but I don't know what else you can do other than include septic or not include septic, but there's not any other place to go. Uh, we've taken it from two persons per bedroom to three, which I will tell you he wasn't comfortable with. Our CDS personal, personnel weren't really comfortable with it. Personally, really not me either but I was trying to find a place that maybe, you know, we, we all could live as a council and be comfortable with it. Um, I have read Larry's amendments that he's proposed. I actually think they're good. I don't have a problem with them. I've read Steve's proposal or Councilman uh, Burt, however I'm supposed to say that. Um, his, there's one piece of it that I would consider putting into the original proposal, and that has uh, that is about the definition of uh, short-term rentals, type one and type two. I don't have an issue with that. The rest of it, it's I mean, let's face it, it's basically the, the initial uh, ordinance uh, that we have already massaged over and over again, and then it's kind of like, and I'm not being uh, detrimental, but it's with some one-offs on it that we didn't talk about. So I'm not for tabling this until October. I think we need to move forward with the conversation. And if we would like to do this before the next work session, we could have another special session before we have the next work session in October. But this conversation's, you know, gone on long enough and we need, we need to move forward. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Mr. Snow? Yeah, I think that we must address the uh, septic tank systems as a concern for the city as a whole, uh, not just for the uh, short-term rental owners. Uh, I've been informed by those who would uh, inspect a septic system that um, what we are calling for in this ordinance being a certified inspection of the system uh, will basically um, cost from uh, in the thousand dollar range. Uh, it will require a rather in-depth um, involvement it involves um, uh, um, pumping the tank uh, cameras inserted to check out the lines and uh, to be sure those lines are all open as they're supposed to be so as I said they, they tell me that it will be somewhere in the thousand dollar range to for that particular inspection otherwise you've got what they call a scratch and sniff inspection where they 
the inspector just walks around the property and determines that uh, there's no uh, raw sewage coming to the top of the ground any place and the system is basically operational um, so that would not comply with the certification part of this particular ordinance um, so um, if that being the case I, I don't see where the, the the septic tank ordinance the septic tank part of this ordinance is really material at this particular point. It needs to be, I think, pulled out and uh, and uh, an, an ordinance all by itself. Health department permits prior to, it requires a copy of the most recent uh, uh, permit. Jerry, it's only on the motion table at this point. The, the, that's what the discussion is on the table. Uh, I'm okay. supporting this motion to table. Uh, <laughs> But, but uh, as uh, Mr. Wozniak said, sometimes three minutes should be a limit for us also. So <laughs> I'll stop on my three minutes and say that, I, uh, again, I've seconded his, uh, his motion, and I'll stop there. Okay, Mr. Flynn. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that happens, as several people pointed out, these uh, short-term rentals increased very quickly and kind of snuck up on us a little bit. And... I think with recent changes in the economy and the interest rates, uh, you know, people felt like, oh man, we've got to do something really fast. This is happening so fast. I'm not so sure it's happening so fast anymore. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've seen houses on the market and they're still on the market several weeks later. It's none of this selling in two days stuff and over list price. So, you know, I think it's a good idea to, uh, table it and, and take our time. I'm not sure it's it's such a rush as we thought it was a few months ago. ago. Okay, anybody else? Mayor Christie, I, I think we have more work to do. I'd like to table it and, and try to blend some of these. I haven't been able to review all of uh, Councilmember <coughs> Wilms uh, suggested tweaks. I'd like to see those too. I think we I think we have more work to do. I would like to see us table it go to work, see if we can come out with something that's got a consensus support. Do you think a month is enough? I could see more, but... Uh, the motion is, motion is there. Sure. Are, we, yep. Are we ready for a vote? Ready? Okay. Okay, this is on tabling until the October meeting, regular meeting. Councilmember Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? No. Burke? Yes. It's a table five to one. Okay. Then we get to the next ordinance, which is very similar. It's regulating short-term rentals to provide for the requirement of a permit to operate a short-term rental, to provide for a maximum number of short-term rental permits to be issued, to provide occupancy uh, limits for short-term rentals to provide a process for revocation of a short-term rental permit and providing penalties for violations and for other purposes. Mr. Same. Wozniak? Same motion. Okay. Same. Second, Mr. Snow? Yes. Okay. Any comments? No? No, the only comment I'll make is, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, I was probably going to offer up a, a table on this one anyway, but you know, because I thought the first one was really where we needed to be. The only thing I'll, I'll say is, you know what, people do your homework where you come in, and if you don't like the way it's written, have some recommendations when you come next time. And don't just keep kicking this can down the road. Okay. Have an opinion. But, well, what came up tonight was the fact that we're taking a handful of people and putting them over here, and then we're leaving everybody else wide open. You know, if, it, if the septic comes out of there, I'll pass it tonight. And make the separate a separate standalone that affects everyone instead of a handful of folks. You can't just pick out 400 people and say, "Hey, eh, you can't do this. Let everybody else alone." It's got to be a standalone thing. Take These it out, are, build it that way, and then you'll have it that'll cover. We're not debating it tonight, so no, we're not. This is about I'm just telling you, right? you don't like what I'm doing, and because it's your baby, I can understand how hard you're pushing. This is the residence of Bella Vista's baby, not mine. Okay, okay folks. I, we're supposed okay. to be discussing on right. table. Anyhow, that's my motion, same as the first one. And we have a second. Anyone else wish to speak? Mr. Wells? 
I, I tend to agree that <clears throat> the septic issues um, need to be in it, dealt with in a separate ordinance. Uh, they don't belong in this ordinance. You don't want two things uh, in a single ordinance where you need to do future regulation on the septic systems anyway. Um, if you may recall, we had a long discussion a year, a year and a half ago about the issue with builders building a house with two bedrooms and offices and uh, exercise rooms, which when they got their occupancy permit, they all of a sudden evolved into three and four bedroom houses being marketed. And so we found a vehicle to resolve that issue to the satisfaction of the realtors, uh, the builders, and the city uh, amicably. But it was only a partial step. We only got halfway there, knowing that we needed to go farther with that program, uh, dealing with the septic side of things. And so uh, it might be timely to consider moving forward with that at this point. Okay, anybody else? Okay, let's go for a roll call. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to, for a clarification, was the second? Mr. Snow. Okay, I wasn't sure if Steve's was the second or not. Very good. <clears throat> roll call vote. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wills? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay, thank you. We're moving on then to resolutions. If you folks want to stay, you can. That's the end of the STR portion. Um, but you're more than welcome to stay and, and listen to what happens in the other uh, in the other few resolutions that are ahead of us. The first resolution is authorizing and levying the millage rate of ad valorem real and personal property tax for the city of Bella Vista, Arkansas for the year 2022 to be collected in 2023. This is something we have to do every year. The county clerk, uh, Betsy Harrell, sent us out a letter dated August the 23rd asking for us to do the usual uh, resolution. Um, and the due date is October 20th, which um, would not give us enough time to be able to respond. So we've moved it up to this meeting. Um, the one in your packet actually shows the general fund operations at four mills. Um, and Mr. Burke has offered an amendment or is about to offer an amendment to bring that back down to 3.97. So let me explain what goes on here. A city council is able to <coughs> impose a millage of up to five mills, period. Anything above five mills, and they must go to the voters. Ours is 5.5, and this is the way it's broken down. There's general operations, which is the five I just spoke about. It was actually at four. So we had not reached out to the five. In September of 14, the previous mayor had an election asking voters to approve a one and a half millage separate from that five for police and fire pensions. Because prior to that, the city was paying it out of the general fund and he felt that it would be a better idea to have it in a standing millage so that we could always ensure that the pension money would be there for fire and for police. And the electorate agreed. And so we have five and a half, but we have four for general operations and we have the one and a half that sits separately. So, Steve, do you want to talk about your amendment? Sure. Uh, okay, Mayor, can I, can I yes, please explain do. the rollback thing? Yes, yes, yes please explain the rollback. Uh, okay, so uh, you all, I hope I can be heard. So last year you adopted your millage, and um, so you adopted a four mil general, 0.5 for the police pension, one mil for the fire, as the mayor uh, discussed. Uh, then uh, state, we got notice from the county assessor that an Amendment 59 rollback had been triggered. And so what that is, is by state constitution, after a countywide reappraisal of property is conducted, if 
the result of that would be an increase in tax revenue of more than 10% due to the reappraisal, then the tax rate must be rolled back so that the government cannot make more than a 10% increase after a countywide reappraisal. So we received notice that a countywide reappraisal had been concluded and that because of the calculation of increased value, we had to roll back that, mill, that four millage to 3.97. And the reason the other two remained at one and at 0.5 is because it was less than the rounding error, basically. So by the time you calculated the rollback, it still rolled back up to point, it rounded back up to 0.5 or 1.0. So that's why that, those didn't change. But for the four, it rolled back to 3.97. And you all have the resolution to do that. So the bills that went out this year show that for the city of Bella Vista, of course, people pay a lot of more property tax to the school districts, but for our portion of that, it shows 3.97 for general, 0.5 for police, and 1.0 for fire. So now it's time to readopt millage. You still have the legal authority to go up to five general mills. That increase would not be due to, a, to an increase in the valuation because of countywide reappraisal. Uh, so you could go back, put it back at four if you want. Or you could go all the way to five, or you could set it at zero. That's that's where you stand legally. And I, and that's where Mr. Burke got a hold of me and wanted to do something. Okay. So the first time the amendment uh, or the resolution was presented, it had four mills, which is really technically an increase from 3.97. These are nominal amounts, but nonetheless, it is a tax increase from 3.97 mills to four mills. I would prefer we don't raise the tax. Just leave it where it is. We don't need it on a round number. The city is doing well through the first eight months of the year. Property tax revenues are up $170,000 compared to the same period last year. This is far greater than the 0 .03 mills that we're talking about here. Through seven months of this year, Sales tax is up $363,000 compared to the same period last year. Better than budget by $1.3 million. It is a fine point. I don't want to over-dramatize it, but we don't need to increase taxes when we don't need to increase taxes. It's more important that whatever dollars these amount to, that they stay in the pockets of the residents of Bella Vista. We don't need to put it on a round number. 3.97 is, is fine with me. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Do we know what that 3% equates to? It's, it's not 3%, it's less well, than 1%. Point okay, point zero zero three. Three. Any idea yeah. what it equates to dollar-wise? No. One mil is about 600,000. Okay. That's citywide, so we don't know what the individual would have on that three tenths. No, percent. it's not three tenths. Yeah, but we don't know where anybody's at. 0.03 of a percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, it's been uh, an amendment, but nobody has second. Did you move? Right, let, me, let me try that. Yeah. <laughs> move I, to amend move, read as presented. I, I move to amend right. the resolution to keep the general fund operations millage at 3.97. I, I second. 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 And that, all, that would leave the total at 5.47. Correct. Right and I, I do want to make a comment. In the, uh, I think the explanation left a few people in the dust. Basically, we can go up to five mills without any vote of the people. And we've always been at four mills. And I'm pretty sure all the big cities around us are all at five. And they have way more, way more revenue than we do. But we've always stayed purposely below. And I agree with uh, Steve's idea about 3.97. Anybody else? I agree. It's a rainy day fund. Leave it sit there. Just in case. Okay. Let's do Ready the for a vote. Let's send the motion with me. Right. Okay. Mr. Snow. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Wozniak. Yes. Wilms. Yes. Fowler. Yes. Burke. Yes. Carried 6 0. Okay. Now, Mayor, you need to have a motion to approve the resolution as amended. So moved. Mr. Wilms? Second. Mr. Flynn? All right, 
roll call vote again. <coughs> Councilmember Wilms? Yes. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carey? Six seven. Thank you. The next resolution is <coughs> repealing resolution number R2022-37 and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Blue Guys IT through the interlocal purchasing system program in the total amount of $108,442 for the purchase of total security solution to enhance the city cyber security efforts. Just to refresh your memory, um, this is a switch from the state contract to a cooperative purchasing. There was a misconception that the state vendor number was the same as the state contract number, and that wasn't the case. So in that case, then we have to repeal, and then we have to move here um, and run it through the other system. Are there any comments at all? Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Wilms and Mr. Snow. All right. Roll we'll call vote again. Councilmember Wozniak? Yes. Burke? Yes. Fowler? Yes. <coughs> Wilms? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Snow? Yes. Carried 6 0. The next resolution is renaming a portion of St. Andrew's Circle to St. Andrew's Drive. Again, to refresh your memory. The subject portion of this street was recently known. Um, and has been known as St. Andrew's Drive by the residents of the Bella Vista CDS Street Department and 911 Administration. Due to a, a clerical error made years ago, most of the addresses were incorrectly assigned to drive rather than circle. This clerical error was recently discovered after a new bill uh, requested an address. After the error was discovered, residents were notified by letter from County 911 at the change of address from 46 St. Andrews Drive to uh, 46 St. Andrews Circle, and the street department corrected the signage on the street corners. And um, the residents that have been affected are asking to keep it as drive uh, uh, rather than circle. And frankly, I think all of us have moved enough times that when you have to go through and change all your credit cards and everything else, it isn't fun. So it is my recommendation that we agree with the residents and um, and we keep it as drive. Any comments? Move to approve. Mr. Wilms? Second. Mr. Uh, Wozniak? Yep. <clears throat> okay, roll call vote again. Councilmember Snow? Yes. Flynn? Yes. Wozniak? Yes. Wilms? Yes. Fowler? Yes. Burke? Yes. Carried, 6-0. Thank you. The next resolution and final one of the evening is amending the 2022 city budget to appropriate $27,000 in otherwise unappropriated and undesignated funds to the police department to fund a one-time $1,500 stipend for all qualified city police and fire dispatchers and directing payment. Is there any comment at all? I'll, I'll explain. Right, since I'm the author of that resolution, I'll be glad to explain. Carry on, sir. Early this year, Governor Hutchinson proposed and the legislature approved a $5,000 bonus for every law enforcement officer in the state. The governor said at that time that these bonuses were designated to award and to incentivize officers. He said currently our law enforcement is uh, underfunded, underpaid, and underappreciated. The actions of the General Assembly will uh, to fund this proposal will send the unmistakable message that in Arkansas we support and value our law enforcement officers. I'm presenting a, a resolution for a $1,500 bonus for our dispatchers to complement this bonus that the uh, law enforcement officers receive to show that the uh, city, uh, the, they are appreciated by the city of Bella Vista as valuable members of our law enforcement team. Make no mistake, these dispatchers are in the patrol car with these officers 24-7. They're right there beside them. Um, they are the safety net to ensure that uh, the officer makes it home uh, uh, after their shift is completed. Uh, 
last year, there, or this year, I'm sorry, this year to date, there have been 234 law enforcement officers killed in the United States, five of those in Arkansas. And we depend on these dispatchers to uh, ensure that a Bella Vista officer is not included in those numbers. A we've heard that the, uh, this bonus is not fair to the other departments in the city. Well, the dispatcher's job cannot be compared to any other department in the city. That's a high stress job. I know this year already there's been one person quit because he just couldn't handle the stress. Uh, the dispatchers have a, a PTSD classification all of their own. They're described as the forgotten victims that suffer in silence. Because if you can imagine handling the, the death of a, of a child or a person who is suffering distress from a heart attack that they could not save. And these dispatchers are in the business of, of, saving, uh, of saving lives. Just to give you an example of, kind of what kind of volume that they deal with, um, this year, the dispatchers have handled over 32,000 phone calls, uh, 3, 000, over 3,000 calls. Um, 16,000 calls for service, 227 disturbance calls, 159 civil calls, 78 psychiatric related calls, uh, 366 welfare checks, 19 deaths that they have taken by phone, 5 drownings that they've taken by phone, 226 vehicle accidents, um, 665 calls from uh, our elderly citizens who have fallen and could not uh, could not get up. Uh, this is just kind of a sample of the calls that they've handled. Uh, I'll make a motion that this um, resolution be approved. Senator, do you have anything? Hmm? Are you in any position? Well, the dispatchers work extremely hard. There is no question about it. They take a lot of stressful calls as well. Um, we do have others within the community that also have very, very stressful jobs. Everything from a building inspector to a code enforcement person, which is almost the same as a police, except they don't carry a gun. Um, we have a dispatcher out of the streets department who is responsible for ensuring that in those bad storms, be they ice, sleet, or thunderstorms, and trees are coming down, that we have all the streets personnel safely accounted for and that they're out there cleaning the roads so that all of us can get up the next morning and go to work or make sure that the kids get to school. So I appreciate what you're doing for the fire and police dispatchers. I'm in there every day listening to some of the calls, but I, I truly believe that there are other people that are also in very stressful jobs that are being left out. Mayor? One thing that wasn't mentioned in Jerry's presentation, if things get busy and everybody's out there on a call and the phone rings two or three times, guess who gets to pick who gets help first? Dispatcher picks who's going where first. Just think about that. They get to pick who gets help first. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Mayor, one more comment. Sir. This money is not coming from uh, any other. It's already in the police department budget. It's just an appropriation of the, the money that's already in the budget. That's not correct. No, that's not correct. It's, this is coming out of general reserves. This is extra money to the police department, the way it's currently drafted. Sir? But at the end of the year, when you look at the police department's budget, because I know about it, there's always money left because not everybody works all year. You have openings and that money sits there, so it is technically in the budget. So it could come out of that. Because I can't remember any year in the 14 years I ran the place that I didn't give them back a sufficient portion of wages because of people who left and all that money sat there until I re replaced them, or somebody of a higher position left, and the next guy didn't get as much money, or we didn't use all the overtime, 
So the money will be there at the end of the year. Now, whether we choose to use that money is something else. Because when we don't use it, it goes back in the general fund and we redistribute it the next year. Well, in reality, for quite a few years now, Chief Graves has made sure that he does use his budget if he sees that there is going to be some sort of surplus, then we're pulling something out of the next year and putting it into that year so that we can cover it sooner than we thought we would be able. So well, yeah, and we, we can play the game as long as sure. we stay within the department. We right. can move money any place. Like he does want. an exemplary job in his budget. Mayor Christie. Sir. Mayor, uh, I, I do believe our dispatchers are, are heroes to our community. I've uh, been close enough to them and had the opportunity to understand their roles. And I, I think they're heroes. I do want to give uh, latitude to you as the executive in charge of the city staff that if you think this is more disruptive than it is uh, goodness and, and recognition of the role that they do, I don't want to be disruptive and I want to honor, you know, I want to give you latitude in that. I think what I hear you saying is in terms of the what about me factor, that that can be a morale issue across city staff and you would just assume we don't do it here we try to look across the entirety of city staff and make sure that our employees are being fairly compensated for the roles that they do. That's true. What we're doing is an exhaustive, never done before, salary study for each and every position in the city so that we can ensure that going into 2023, we are paying the right amount for each employee because my feeling is at this point we are not because over the years what's been happening is we catch up a little bit and we put some cola in and then we get hit with massive inflation such as we're getting hit now what i would much prefer to do is to give each employee an increase that stays with them the fifteen hundred dollars is gross they have to pay the taxes and everything before they get a net amount. I want to make sure that everybody is fairly paid with their level of competence because I don't have that feeling right now that that's the case. And that's why we're spending a lot of time with Johansson Brothers to go through and look at every single job, come up with a pay scale that for those of you that have been in the corporate world, like myself, there's usually a minimum, a mid, and a max, right? But how do you know when somebody hits minimum? What's the criteria? And nobody can answer it. And so that's what we have tasked uh, the Johansson Group, is to build steps. If you've ever been involved in union negotiations, I have been for years, it's always with a step program so you know how to move the next person up in the chain rather than just taking a dart and saying I think it's that and that's what I'm trying to accomplish through this and we will have the numbers prior to approving the upcoming budget we have got the money um, if you look at the balance sheet we're sitting very flush with cash right now because we have a recession coming at us. I am convinced of it. I don't know how hard it's going to be, but I have enough money put aside to cover all the wages and benefits for each of our 178 employees, because I want them to know that if this happens, I gave them the same insur assurance in the pandemic, everybody keeps their jobs. No furloughs, no layoffs, because you, as the residents here expect to have the great service even if we go through a downturn in the economy. And by the way, a pothole is a pothole and it doesn't care if you're in a recession or in very flush time, it's got to be fixed. And so that is my strategy moving forward. We also have some capital projects coming up next year. And I want the next mayor to be in a position to either pay cash or to go and get a loan. For example, we have another ladder truck coming, something that we need to stay ahead of what's happening. 
That ladder truck will arrive sometime late spring, maybe May. But you just don't go down to the ladder store and order it. You actually have to go and talk to the plant, get it ordered, and put specific things on it that you want. That's going to be 1.5 million. And it is needed, and it is required, but again, I want to make sure that we have the cash available if the mayor and the council decide that they want to pay cash because we're in the middle of a recession and they don't want to incur short-term debt. So that's my strategy. And there are other capital projects as well, but that's one of the biggest ones. Actually, no, there's a bigger one, which is fire station number one. Does everybody know where that is? Down where City Hall is? Down where the police station is? Okay, it's a very, very old area, and it needs to be upgraded. The bays are too small. We can barely get some of the pumpers in there, and they have to back in. The ladder truck that's in there now was specifically designed for a small bay. So the first portion of the plan is that when the police move out of their building, which is a former POA office building, we've never had a proper police station, and they move up to the new public safety building along with the court here, that we will begin phase one of revamping and refurbishing that entire fire station so that at the end of three years we will have five bays, not three, and we will have a proper up-to-date accommodations for the fire personnel so they no longer have to sleep in a common room anymore. Fire station number one is the last one that that happens in. They'll have individual bedrooms, individual showers and bathrooms. And that's going to go into where the police station is now. And Chief Sims is estimating that that's probably going to about a little over two million. Again, I've got the cash for it. And I want to make sure that that happens so that we can continue to improve the infrastructure because the growth is still going to continue. I'm convinced of it. And we need to make sure everybody has the protection. Now again, if the mayor and the council decide that they want to borrow, fair ball. But I want to give them that option. So that's a long answer. I should have taken the three minute oath as well. Time to vote, sir. One last comment. Yep. I, I understand we have a, a fantastic team at the street department, at community development, the fire department. We have nothing but good employees in all those departments. It's true. That still does not, uh, does still not uh, cover the dispatchers. They are required to maintain certain certifications in order to keep their job. Uh, I understand a pothole is a pothole, but also a heart attack is a heart attack. So our dispatchers are in the, they're in the, the business of saving lives. So next time, remember if uh, you uh, have a heart attack coming home, call the street department or call community development. Um, see how that works out. Thanks, but, Jerry. That was very insightful. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> well, one hey, more thing. You know, we spent $80,000 on the statue. I mean, where does that all fit in with all of this? Because it's honoring the very police that you're talking about? Do what? Honors the very police. Well, okay. Let's, kind of let's move on. Okay. Kind of Let's take the okay, we have a motion and a second. So, for those in favor, Councilmember Wilms. Um, no. Councilmember Fowler. No. Councilmember Burke. No. Councilmember Wozniak. Yes. Flynn. Yes. Snow. Yes. Mayor, you may vote in favor or not vote. I will not vote. So it fails on a tie vote. Okay. The last piece of business is announcements. The next City Council workshop uh, session will be 5.30, Monday, October 17th, here in the court. And the next regular uh, meeting is 6.30 on Monday, October the 24th, here in the, in the court. Planning Commission work session is this Thursday at 4.30 in the court. Planning Commission regular meeting will be at 4.30 Monday, October the 12th, 
at Bella Vista Court and the Board of, of Construction Appeals, if necessary, will be 3 p.m. on Tuesday, October the 11th, also at the court. Thank you for attending this evening. Thank you for speaking out. We are adjourned. Well, if you did, thank you.